So with Wimbledon only a week away and the draw coming out on Friday, we have some massive results happening this week and the seeds are actually set for Wimbledon after this week. So let's go have a look at who won last week on the ATP and WTA because we had some massive events with some massive names playing. So starting over at the Berlin Open, a WTA 500 event, Kvitova taking out Vekic 6276 to win another title this year. And of course, she's done very well at Wimbledon in the past. So it might be a dark horse to watch out for. We have a WTA 250 event at the Birmingham Open with Ostapenko taking out Krajikova 7664. And again, another dark horse to watch out for at the Hella Open, an ATP 500 event. We had Bublik taking out Rublev in three sets, 6-3, 3-6, So a big win there for Bublik, who now gets seeded as a result of that win. And at the Queen's Club Championships, another 500 event, Carlos Alcaraz wins his first tournament on grass, beating Dalek Dimitrov 6-4, 6-4. And of course, that had massive ramifications when it comes to rankings, which we'll talk about in a second. But they were the winners of some of the big tournaments on the WTA and ATP this week in preparations for Wimbledon. Let's start with the players that have gone up in the rankings that are outside the top 10 as a result of some really good form. Starting with Bublik, he's gone up to number 27 in the world, 21 spots higher than last week after winning the biggest trophy of his career. Also a career high ranking for him and will be seated at Wimbledon, so it's been a great week for Bublik. Donna Vekic also got a boost in the rankings, three spots higher than last week to number 20 in the world. And Von Drusova, she goes up 13 spots to number 40 in the world after having a really good week in Berlin. Let's go have a look at the players that have gone down in the rankings. Starting with Cressy, he's gone down 13 spots to number 55 in the world after a poor result this week and losing a lot of points. Draper also dropping the rankings 18 spots down number 74 after not playing this week and losing some points. Of course, he's not playing Wimbledon, so his ranking is in limbo. And also Simona Halep, she goes down to number 50 in the world, 10 spots lower than last week as a result of not being able to play this week and losing a lot of points. There's some big drops there for some players that couldn't hold their points. So let's go have a look at the rankings on the WTA and no changes at the top with Fiontek staying at one and Sabalenka at number two with Rabakina at number three. Pagula comes in at number four, and that'll be the top four seeds going into Wimbledon. So that's a lock for the top four. And of course, the top four don't play until the semifinals. Garcia will come in at number five. Jabir at number six. Goff at seven. Zachary at eight. Kvitova stays at nine, despite winning a tournament last week. And Krajikova, she jumps into the top 10, pushing out a Daj Meyer, two spots higher than last week, making the final of Birmingham. So she got a nice little boost there. And she'll be the number 10 seed going into Wimbledon. So not so many changes, but that is a lock. And that'll be the top 10 seeds going into Wimbledon, unless somebody gets injured and pulls out next week. Having the race of the finals now, and not too many changes at the top with Sabalenka staying at one, Fiance at two, Rabakina at three, and Pagula at four. Mukova stays at five, but Kvitova, she goes up five spots to number six in the race of the finals, adding to that Miami trophy she won a couple of months ago. Krajikova also went up one spot into that number seven spot, pushing Goff down to number eight. Bencic goes down to nine, and Kudamatova rounds out the top 10 with Daj Meyer dropping out completely. So some big changes there to the rankings. And of course, with Wimbledon just around the corner, expect this to change a lot in the next couple of weeks. Going over to the men's side of things, and we have a change at the top. Again, it feels like every other week we talk about this. Alcaraz is now back on top. That is the sixth time the number one ranking has changed hands between those two guys, pushing down Djokovic into that number two spot ahead of Wimbledon. He had to win this week, Alcaraz, and he did. And he's just ahead of Djokovic there going into the third Grand Slam of the year. Medvedev stays at four with Rude at number five. So that'll be the top four seeds going into Wimbledon. Sitsipas just behind at number five with Runa at number six. Rublev at seven. We have a change in the middle with Sinner going up one spot to number eight, pushing Fritz down to number nine after Fritz had a poor week this week. And Tiafo will round out the top 10 for the seedings and the rankings this week. So that is what the rankings are going to look like going into Wimbledon again. Again, unless somebody's injured and pulls out of Wimbledon before the draw comes out on Friday. Going over to the race of the finals, and Djokovic still at number one, but Alcaraz, he overtakes Medvedev going back into number two, pushing Medvedev down to number three, with Tsitsipas down at number four. Runa at five. Rublev, he gets a boost going up to number six after making the final in Halle, pushing Sinner down to number seven. Rude stays in at eight with Fritz at number nine, and Hashinov rounds out the top ten for the race of the finals. And again, this will change a lot over the next couple of weeks because Wimbledon is worth so many points. This year, it's worth so many points and we could get some players actually qualifying for the finals if they have a really good tournament over at Wimbledon in a few weeks. So there it is. The seedings are locked. We're going to have a separate video for that, so go check out that video on the seedings and who is actually going to be seated at Wimbledon in that top 32. But they're the top 10s for this week. Let me know down in the comments below. Any shocks for you? Are you shocked that we keep getting a change at the top? Alcaraz dropped down after the French Open, but now he's back in there at number one for Wimbledon. He was, of course, number one at French Open after gaining it back after Rome, after Djokovic didn't play well at Rome. I mean, it's been a wild number one and two race, just going back and forth, back and forth. But maybe it might change because Wimbledon, of course, is Djokovic's domain and maybe he can start getting those points 
that a lot of you think he deserves uh, from winning Wimbledon last year, of course. He didn't get anything for it. But let me know down in the comments below what's the most wild part of the ranking so far. Those seeds are locked in now for Wimbledon next week. That's only a week away. We're getting closer to the third slam of the year.